RGTV. 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 Yo, this is Fro Frizzle, Team UHFL, and you're locked in to Omaha's very own RGTV. Salute. I'm a, I'm a guy just trying to tell a story, man. You know what I mean? I'm just out here trying to, uh, to create music through my situations and, and help better someone. It was, uh, you know, I always had... I always had a fro, bro. I was like afro, you know. So I was like middle school. I was afro. Is that natural? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's no perm. It's no juice. No, like the soul glow. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like this is natural, you know. And um, I was just, I always had that name, you know, ever since middle school. And when I got older, you know, it, it was fro, and uh, I, I, it started falling. And you know, my hair would grow so fucking long that it started like dropping. It started getting all frizzy. So I had my boy Heat, you know, he would call me Frizzle. And it just kind of just stuck, you know, just Fro Frizzle, fr Frizzle Fro, like, you know, it was just, it was one or the other, like I answered to them both. So kind of just combined to that shit because so either someone knew me from either one, you know? Bro, like my, my brothers did music out here. They were the first like multicultural group to be featured on local radio. Like, you know, when Houston first did like the, the they called it the BYOB, Bring Your Own Beats. And uh, my brothers did that, you know, around like 2002, 2003-ish, you know, something like that. And, uh, you know, they, they just had me in the studio with them all the time. You know, I remember my brother was constantly just, you know, they would, at first they would write stuff for me or they would encourage me to write. And, you know, I did a couple intro tracks, like speaking and doing some stuff. But I just, they just always had me involved, you know. And then as they grew up and, you know, started doing other things, I just, you know, I was 15, just moved to Phoenix, Arizona. and. I had the opportunity to open up for uh, Fat Joe, and uh, you know, just took off from there. Bro, it is a, a melting pot of some great artists, man. Great artists, you know, from from my boy Enzy, who I make music with constantly. You know, we, you know, we do our team youth things. You know, to Access, to Jazz Simone, you know, to. Uh, to, to galvanize Tron, you know, to AJ the Dread, Shook One, like, you know, I can go on, you know, uh, Greco, like, amazing artists, mm -hmm. amazing artists, you know, it's just, Omaha has a lot to say, and like, I, I can sit here and, and keep on listing Omaha artists, I, I mess with Omaha artists, constant, you know, major, right. I, it, it's, it's definitely mo it's something that people are sleeping on, you know, it's, it's, um, you, it, the musical roots in Omaha are so deep, you know, that's, you know, Terrace Martin making the tracks for Kendrick, you know, that's some soulful shit, you know, that's inspired by Omaha. Like, you know, it's, we got a little bit from Chicago and a little bit from Kansas City, the soul and the blues and, and, and the, just the real poetic type shit. And, and coming off a tour with a national artist, I realized that there's a whole nother side to this, man, a whole nother business aspect that, Okay, you're a dope rapper. That's that's super cool. But you gotta have that hustle mentality. You gotta have. You gotta be able to market yourself. You gotta be a marketable person. You gotta make music that appeals to people. You know, if you listen to my music, it's evident what I'm out here trying to do. Alexander King and Jelly Roll's uh, Hangovers and Hot Chickens tour. Um, that that in itself was crazy because there was no plans for that. There was no like. Happen. Uh, bro, like, I just had a rapport with Jelly. We did a song, Let's Match. You know, you can hear it on my SoundCloud. Um, we did that song, and he came to Council Bluffs like a couple weeks later, and, you know, we met up at the venue, and, you know, he's telling us, he's like, yo, you know, next year I'm going to be doing this tour. I'm going to have a live band. I'm going to be doing all this new music, blah, blah, blah. And literally a year later, he came back around and was doing that, you know? So I hit him up. I was like, yo, I see you're going to be in Des Moines. I'm going to come check you out. And, uh, you know, I can't, I went out to Des Moines and I checked out the show and he was doing exactly what he said he was going to do. You know what I mean? He had the live band doing Johnny Cash covers, doing his songs with, with, uh, uh, Uncle Cracker. You know what I mean? It was, it was crazy to see that he had, this man had a vision and he made it come true and within a year, you know? Right. So that, that gave me confidence in itself. It was like, all right, this can, you know, if you have a vision, you can make it work. Whiskey Tango already reached out to me and Enzi asked if we wanted to do the show. So we were like, yeah, you know, you know, I told him I'm going to be open up for you if you want to do our song, you know, it's whatever. So we uh, 
he comes down to Omaha and we spent, you know, just four days of doing some just debaucherous ass shit at the KOA campsite. Right. You know, we just had a blast, man. Just really got, just really got in tune. And um, we did the show the night of the show. And me and just me and Anthony were the only openers, you know, and we just tore that bitch back. We had it jumping, you know. So it was something they didn't really expect. The whole band was just really like blown away, you know. Right. So um, they're like, you know, we're going to Denver what's up like you know so we're just like fuck it you know like i said like i you know i don't have no job this this is what i do so i look at enzy i look at my manager joel and you know he uh he's like let's just roll you know from so we went to denver and we did we uh we didn't end up doing the show out there but uh they were hitting a phoenix a phoenix show uh -huh. so they're like yo you know i know you're from phoenix and i asked, asked them about doing the show so they threw us on it so uh, from Denver, we went to uh, LA with them. We got to see a, uh, we got to see him uh, perform at the Roxy. You know, right there. Wow. Yeah, just a, a monumental venue right. in California. So, uh, you know, we get to Phoenix and we do the show. That's my hometown. So a lot of people showed out, and uh, I'm getting on the tour bus saying my goodbyes. Like, you know, I appreciate the opportunity. I really do. You know, and Jelly just looked at me and he was just like, "Bro, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with your life?" And you know, and I just. You know, hit him with the emoji, like, I don't know. Right. And he was just like, go grab your bag, bro. You know, and just threw me on the bus. So that that was just like, like yeah, you got to understand that prior to, like, I didn't have no place to stay, bro. I was sleeping on my man's floor. Bless him for fucking taking care of me. Right. You know, fucking staying at motels, sleeping in, you know, females' cars. Like, it was rough, you know what I mean? So to have that, you know, I was just like, just blown away, you know. So from... Phoenix, Arizona. It was a 23-hour drive straight through to Louisville, Kentucky, and um, I just soaked so much knowledge into that time. You know, from from Louisville, we went to uh, we went to Louisville. We hit Little Rock, Arkansas. You know, he shot up to uh, Detroit to do a Thanksgiving after Thanksgiving show. With Uncle Cracker. Uh, he did his finishing to, uh, finishing show out in Nashville, and I performed with uh, my, our, our boy Cushy. You know, one of his artists. We did a song while he was down here in Omaha. We, we recorded a track that uh, you know they was really feeling. So we we uh, performed it a couple of times on the road, and it was it was just a blessed feeling, man, to have those people behind me. Alexander King, you know, Cushy, Cookie, JJ, Cliffy, you know, all everybody, cousin Phil. Just like I gained so much from that from that experience. You know what I mean? It was uh, it's definitely a blessing. I stayed with Jelly for like a month, uh, you know what I mean, just crashed on his couch and got up every day and I actually sat in on the studio session where he dropped Therapeutic Music 5, he just dropped it on iTunes, you know, um, a couple months ago and uh, I got to see him record that whole, that whole album and to really get a grip get a, a first, you know, bird's eye view of someone who's professional in the game and how he recorded an album. Like he literally, bro, got off tour, went, we maybe spent like two or three days bullshitting around and then it was studio every day. You know, I don't have a solid project out. I don't have an album out. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's one thing I gotta do is get one, one entity, one project, one whatever you wanna call it. I don't wanna call it an album. I don't wanna call it a mixtape. I don't wanna call it an EP. You know, but this one thing and, and really stand behind it. So it's just, that's what I'm doing right now. I gotta, I gotta see what a show looks like and I gotta see what a real uh, recording of an album is like. So- And that's next. And that's next. That's, you know, I'm in the process of it right now. You know, back, back uh, bouncing, bouncing back and forth from DVG studios to Make Believe Studios, just really putting together something. You know, before I, before we end this interview, you know, I just want to give a shout out to first and foremost my management team. It's one man, Joel Ryan from Anchor Entertainment. You know, I would be lost without that dude. That he he's done a lot for me. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank him and what what the company has done for me, getting me back and forth to Nashville and to these shows. I'll give a shout out to my team, you partner NZ Tante. Be on the lookout for new music for me and him. And I'm I'm ready to work anytime, bro. I'm. I'm ready to work.